picture a flick all about Joan and Alice, a dynamic duo with the budgeting skills of a squirrel at a stock market. Life's gotten so gnarly that their kitchen's emptier than a kid's piggy bank after a candy store rampage, and their rent, let's just say it's on a vacation that never ends. Now, Joan's stuck at a marketing joint, working harder than a squirrel during nut gathering season. But he's got more self-esteem issues than a banana trying to fit in with the oranges. And the icing on this stress cake? His boss, who's threatening to turn him into a kangaroo if he doesn't start selling more widgets. Meanwhile, Alice is on an interview roller coaster, where the only consistent thing is the word no. Her experience level is like a bicycle with training wheels in a room full of motorcycles. Back at home, their landlord Arnie thinks he's Cupid, but his aim is way off. He's got a talent for making Alice feel like she's in a never-ending episode of the Awkward Landlord Chronicles. One night, Joan and Alice strut their stuff into a fancy bash, not realizing they're playing hide-and-seek with the dress code. Imagine their shock when they realize they're the only ones in jeans at a tuxedo convention. But hey, they're staying put, it's Peyton Shindig after all, and he's turned into a millionaire butterfly since their college cocoon days. Joan and Alice feel more out of place than a penguin at a beach party but they've got one ace up their sleeve-free drinks. It's like a vacation in a glass for their budget-trapped souls. The next sunlit adventure finds John waking up with a head that's pounding like a caveman's drum solo. Alice, being the superhero she is, marches to the kitchen like a knight on a quest, only to discover the fridge is emptier than a library after a book-burning party. Off they go to the store, pockets jingling like a coin percussion orchestra. But in a comedy of errors, they crash their cart. Luckily, they escape with their limbs intact which is a small victory in a world full of grocery warfare. Now, in a moment that's part spy thriller, Alice spots a granny finding treasure in the trash. Nearby is a store. Alice, fueled by curiosity and a dash of caffeine, bolts across the street faster than a squirrel after a caffeinated acorn. She has a heart-to-heart -heart with the storekeeper, complimenting artifacts like their fashion models at a catwalk show. But when the storekeeper's phone rings and she's distracted, Alice snatches the sparkling teapot and dashes away like a tea-themed superhero with an illicit mission. Joan gets shocked when he sees Alice taking something without asking for the first time. But Alice insists she's just borrowing it. The next day, John goes to work while Alice is fixing her hair with an iron. She's busy on the phone and accidentally burns her head. At the same time, the teapot moves by itself. When Alice opens it, she finds money inside, which surprises her a lot. To figure out how this works, she tries burning her head again and voila! more money comes out. So Alice starts hurting herself in different ways, and each time, the teapot gives out more money. Meanwhile, Joan's boss fires him for not meeting his sales target. He comes home sad and finds Alice lying unconscious with bruises. He's scared and calls for help, but Alice suddenly wakes up and says she's fine. Joan shares his job loss with her, and in response, Alice slaps him hard. It's confusing, but then Alice shows John the money from the teapot. They discover that the teapot gives out money when they get hurt. Alice explains it all, but John doesn't believe it. To prove it's real, Alice kicks John, and the teapot gives even more money. This convinces John, so they spend the night hurting each other to get money. But they get really tired, and John starts worrying that the teapot will ruin their relationship. Alice, who's more greedy, says they'll get rid of the teapot when they have one million dollars. But John isn't sure. The next morning, John takes the teapot to a store, but nobody's there. So he goes to an antique show. An expert values it at $5,000, which is way less than John hoped for. So, he brings the teapot back home. Meanwhile, a guy named Dr. Ling sees the teapot on TV and wants to meet Joan for some reason. In the next scene, the couple is back to being greedy. They hurt themselves intentionally to get more money from the teapot. They do all sorts of painful things like waxing, getting tattoos, and even some wild stuff in bed. The teapot keeps giving them money, so they hide it all in their bathroom to avoid paying taxes. The sun rises on a new day, and Alice's family crashes the scene for dinner like a herd of overly excited pandas. They playfully poke fun at Alice for not having little humans running around and not possessing a grown-up job. Whatever that is. But when their eagle eyes spot the bling-bling in the house, they ambush John with the million-dollar question. What's your secret gig? Joan, the master of mischief replies with a wink and a grin, claiming he's conquering the world of real estate one imaginary mansion at a time. Fast forward to Joan and Alice's victory dance over their financial freedom. They raise their invisible disco ball and marvel at how a mere teapot pulled off a budget magic trick that would make Houdini jealous. Amidst this victory fiesta, a knock on the door interrupts their funky moves. Joan, 
in his best door detective mode, answers, only to be ambushed by two brothers with a mission more urgent than a caffeine-deprived sloth's coffee run. They're on the hunt for the legendary teapot, the family heirloom that's been passed down like a never-ending game of hot potato. Grandma had guarded it like a dragon's treasure, but it vanished recently and it seems she took the secret recipe for eternal life with her. Alice, with a poker face smoother than butter on hot toast, spins a yarn about selling the teapot and using the profits for the ultimate makeup haul. The brothers, looking like they just saw a unicorn dance, demand the rest of the teapot stash. Alice, in a move worthy of a magician, fishes out some cash that the teapot poofed up from Joan's run-in with the brothers and hands it over, leaving them speechless and coin-clad. After this heart-pounding episode of Family Feud, Teapot Edition, John, and Alice channel their inner Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys, armed with library cards and a thirst for tea. I mean, knowledge. They dive into a book adventure in the dusty corners of an ancient library. Alice discovers a plot twist that even a soap opera would envy and discreetly rips a page out of the script. The book spills the beans about the teapot's historical origins and its magical powers that are as problematic as a chatty parrot in a library. Joan, wearing a frown bigger than a rainbow's arch, tries to flip to the page about the teapot's dark side, but Alice, with the acting prowess of a superstar, fibs that it's missing, like a plot twist that accidentally got deleted. Now picture this, John and Alice transform from penny pinchers to big spenders faster than a squirrel can stash nuts. They go on a shopping spree that puts Santa's elves to shame trading debts for designer cars and upgrading their living situation from a rabbit hole to a mansion with a money printing attis. Not stopping there, John takes a page from the Vodka Connoisseur's Handbook and starts his own vodka brand. They throw the party of the century for their posh pals, where even the champagne bottles wear tuxedos. But just when they think they've outpartied Gatsby, a mysterious guest crashes the scene Dr. Ling, the curator of chaos and ancient artifacts. With the urgency of a snail's marathon, he warns our dynamic duo of impending doom. He's part of a stuff and magic club that's dying to get their hands on the infamous teapot. Joan, faced with the prospect of magical riches, is intrigued. However, Alice, with the door-slamming ferocity of a fierce grandmother, sends Dr. Ling packing magic and all. Under the moonlight, John and Alice dive into their cash-grab wrestling match, turning their living room into a comedic combat arena. Suddenly, Arnie, the rent-collecting Romeo, stumbles upon their money-making, melee and discovers the teapot's magic mojo. He bursts in like a runaway reindeer, swipes the teapot, and dashes off. Joan, fueled by superhero delusions, pursues Arnie and initiates a tiff that's less Avengers and more avocado toast heroes. The teapot takes a leap of faith onto the asphalt, meets a truck that's more like a traveling marshmallow, and survives without a single scratch. To everyone's astonishment, it's officially the teapot that dabbles in a truck's version of Dodge the Teapot. Reality check time. Our dynamic duo finally comprehends they're in for a supernatural joyride. So, with the sun not even out of its jammies, they speed dial Dr. Ling for some magical counsel. Dr. Ling plays the bearer of bad news role, explaining that the teapot is a real party pooper. It's had a history of turning owners into villains straight out of a B-movie script. He drops the bomb that this teapot is the OG inventor of greed, turning people into crazed, cash-hungry creatures. Ling tries to recruit Joan and Alice into Team Sanity, but they quickly reject his offer like a vegetarian declines a steak dinner. When the moon takes center stage, Alice gets an adrenaline-infused awakening. It's the someone's ransacking our home alarm. She pokes John, who's dreamily counting invisible dollar bills, and they both sneak downstairs to find the Jewish brothers on a money-lifting mission. Frazzled John throws the teapot at them like a makeshift shield. The brothers, however, play teapot tag, you're it and leave it behind. Their explanation? The teapot is like a cursed relic of bad vibes. They're here for the Benjamins, not the teapot tantrums. The next morning, John and Alice wake up with their wallets echoing emptiness. The teapot, now a drama queen, isn't responding to their garden variety antics. It's like the teapot wants them to audition for an action movie to earn a dime. Plot twist. Joan turns into a one-man wrestling match against a tough customer at a bar. He kisses the floor lights, and voila, the teapot finally chucks some moolah, making Alice break into a victory dance that put TikTok to shame. In the park, Alice gets her own show when a skater takes a graceful tumble. The teapot shoots money like a human-friendly ATM inspiring Alice's eureka moment. Suddenly, they're popping up at you FC fights, baby delivery rooms, you name it. Their antics prompt Alice to transform into a money-hungry energy drink. Once, on their way back home, Alice gets a wild idea to run over a person for money. But, luckily, John takes control of the car just in time and stops the accident. 
He tells Alice she's acting crazy, and she responds by using some not-so-nice words. When they get home, they're surprised to see the teapot full of money. This teaches them that the teapot gives money when they feel emotional pain. So, they start using words to hurt each other instead of hurting themselves physically. The next morning, they decide to confess their deepest secrets to hurt each other emotionally. They talk about affairs they had and sleeping with other people. When Alice admits to sleeping with Arnie, John gets really mad and decides to get back at him. He goes to Arnie's house and yells at his wife. To their surprise, the teapot gives out money again, showing that it responds to other people's emotions too. With this new knowledge, they begin telling their friends and family their darkest secrets. This causes problems in their relationships, but they don't really care. One day, Alice gets an idea to try something different. She thinks about stopping sex offender like those involved in bad things or drugs, and she wants to get money for it. At first, John tries to argue, but Alice works her magic and talks him into it. She tells him that these folks are the bottom of the barrel in society and deserve a one-way ticket out. Later, while they're playing dirt excavation, John has a light bulb moment. He tries to halt Alice's operation, playing the teapot made you do it card. But Alice shrugs it off and declares she's a determined criminal, no matter the support. In a state of pure panic, John dials Dr. Ling's hotline, hoping for a teapot detox. But the doctor delivers bad news. The teapot's got Alice wrapped around its magical finger. The only detox option is Alice surrendering the teapot willingly. Later, post-shower, Alice finds John standing at the window. He's got the torn page, the consequences list, in his hand. He gives her the ultimatum, him or the teapot. When Alice doesn't jump into action, John gives his own dramatic performance, pretending to audition for base jumping with a twist. Alice's panic levels skyrocket as she rushes to his rescue. Luckily, he's more bounce than break. This whole ordeal is Alice's wake-up call to reality. She gets all emotional, admitting that her life savings and a teapot aren't worth diddly without John. So, she embraces her inner Marie Kondo and decides to bid adieu to the teapot. But wouldn't you know it, Sneaky Arnie makes an encore appearance, swiping the teapot under cover of darkness. The next day, it's Detective John and Deputy Alice on the case of the missing teapot. They storm Arnie's abode, only to find a living room that looks like it hosted a wrestling match with a herd of wild boars. On top of everything, Arnie and his better half look like they've gone through a blender with all those cuts and bruises. It's like they've accidentally auditioned for the bruise and cut talent show. Just when you thought things couldn't get crazier, the Jewish brothers strut onto the scene, and it's like they decided to turn the place into a wild western showdown. Cue the tumbleweeds. The outcome? Arnie, his wife, and the brothers cash in their chips, while John and Alice are the last ones standing. They grab the teapot and the cash from this unfortunate jackpot like it's a get out of chaos card and skedaddle from the chaos carnival. After a bit, they roll up to Dr. Ling's door, finally ready to hand over the teapot like it's a hot potato. It's the ultimate McDrop on the curse that's been playing games with their lives. Think of it as breaking the curse's high score. And just like that, the curtain closes on their cursed caper as Dr. Ling chucks the teapot into the deep blue abyss where it'll be the ocean's problem now. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe Mango Recap for more video like this and help the channel grow.